Howdy folks, welcome back to another Johnson's Garage video. Today, we're going to be going over this Predator 3500 watt inverter generator. I bought this back in, what, February, late January, early February. I think, I'd have to look at the video, I can't remember. Sometime around there, I bought this generator, because it kept having problems uh, in the winter of us losing power out here, so. Um, I don't, when I lose power, it wakes me right up. My fans turn off, I can't sleep and whatnot. And then when the power's up for several hours, I got nothing to keep the fridge going or um, you know, in, in, in this case I can run, if I run, have power to my router, I have internet. Because um, when we lose power out here, we lose cell service too. So um, this has been a lifesaver. You know, when we lose power, I had ran it for like 10 hours one night, we lost power for quite a while. And I was able to run my internet router and everything else because our uh, internet service out here runs off a generator when the power goes out. So, still had internet, still had communication. So, that was nice. Um, but we've also been using this uh, for camping. We use this on the Gambler 500. Um, the video is on my uh, other channel, but I'll post a link down below. Um, we use the Harbor Freight 110 welder with this to weld up a part on a Bronco. It was pretty cool. It worked out nicely. Um, and I let my friend borrow this for three nights. Uh, they put about 20 or 30 hours on it running their RV and it did awesome with that too, using the RV plug and all that. Um, so overall I've been really happy with it. I got about 110 hours on it. I've changed the oil once, but we're going to check it again. Um, probably go ahead and change it since I have oil with me. And then uh, we're going to check the air filter and some other stuff. I want to figure out where the air filter is, so we're going to dig in this just a tiny bit, see what's going on on the inside, and love on it a little bit. I'm kind of thinking I want a cup of coffee now. Yeah, two times I've gone camping, I brought my uh, Keurig one shot coffee maker, and I made everybody at the campsite coffee, and uh, it was well appreciated. This thing weighs in at about 100 pounds, so. It's a little heavy lifting it in and out of this truck, but uh, typically leave it back here. Nobody's done anything with it, so it's probably too heavy for anybody uh, to take it out. But I'm actually going to take it out of the truck this time and uh, put it in the garage. My uh, this truck here is going back into project mode. I'm going to do some steering upgrades to it and. Um, I think I might actually start swapping in my other transfer case and getting a uh, new drive shafts made for it, get all that taken care of. So that's some stuff I need to get done on this. So oil is just a tad dark, it's not that bad, but it does have about 60 hours on it. Oh, we got to clean the uh, spark arrestor on this too, that's part of your... Uh, deal there's a little to-do list on this thing for regular maintenance I only sniffed it because I was seeing if it got any gas I spilled gas all along the side of this thing so our air filter is this it right here it appears to be. Is this supposed to be connected to something else? I don't know. Let's move that over. Let's see. Is this our air filter? I think this is our air filter. That's pretty simple. Look at that. It's not even dirty. It's got 100 and 110, 115 hours on it. Okay, I've got the sparkulator out. My toolkit is inconveniently behind you guys. We're gonna have to get this evap canister out of the way here. What's going on here, Jimmy?
Okay, we just move that aside. That's all we needed. I'm also using a Quinn Harbor Freight brand uh, toolkit here. I usually keep this in my car. This one's been pretty decent. Harbor Freight, I think, is really coming around with a lot of their stuff, just making things a little bit nicer. Even though it is built to a you know, certain price, it's still, some of their stuff is pretty decent. Like this Predator stuff, I absolutely love it. It's a big, big fan of it. Well, a little dirty. That tea bag. Torch. Well, it's working, so I, might, I hope that's actually tightening up. I know the threads are all stripped out already. Oh, there we go. And click. Well, we don't need to put the. We don't, we don't need to put this on just yet. What I want to go ahead and do is run this, and I'm going to hook up a heat gun to it. We'll run the heat gun for a couple minutes just to get the engine warmed up a little bit and then we'll go ahead and dump the oil. So on these before you plug anything in, turn it on first. So we should be able to do start. Give her a second. It was probably less than a minute, but that'll be good enough. Get a pan. And we'll start, we'll start dumping. You know, let's try something. This is not draining as fast as I want. Perfect. So this doesn't take a whole lot of oil, but we'll put our funnel in there. Actually, before I do that, I've got some Briggs and Stratton oil we'll run first. I think this is what I used last time, so I'll, let's see if this will fill it. 
because I think I used half of this for the last oil change. In case I overfill it just a little bit, we'll put this rag in there to catch the oil. And this one, they want you to fill it to where the oil just starts to touch the splines on the deal. So this dipstick kind of turns a little useless. In fact, it's uh, actually right there. It's right at the bottom of the threads. Cool. We're going to call that good. All right, we're going to take this backing off here so we can get at our muffler a little bit easier. I got a ton of these at Harbor Freight. I've noticed they're all 900 bucks. Great generators. So far we're at 122 hours with no issues. Knock on plastic. Something I want to get in conjunction with the generator is a uh, big uh, like 2000 watt battery bank power stations as they call them. I don't like to call them generators because they don't physically generate electricity. But it'd be nice to have something to run at night while camping. Well that one's got some junk in it. How about an 8 mil? Hey look at that. Or we can use an 8 mil. Probably the only part of the generator that got warm. So this is the little spark arrestor we need to clean. What we'll do is we'll just set it on a rag and brake clean it. Yeah, not too bad. It's basically just a bunch of wire smashed together, so... It's probably as good as we're going to get on that. And then we got this piece, too, to clean out. Oh yeah, nice welds. A couple of pieces of wire. Got that excess welding wire cleaned off of that. All right, I stick this leg in there, and then you can probably take this. Put it in.
That's probably why the spark plug showed up just a tiny bit wet. Because it has a little bit of a, a rundown time when you turn it off, so. Other than that, we're good to go. Still has a full tank. I'm going to have to run it and burn some gas off or just drain it somehow. Well, anyways, folks, that's going to be it for this video on this generator. Um, again, I've been pretty happy with it. I have really no complaints other than this lock constantly coming undone. It's hard to get it out of this position. I think it's because I bent the bracket a little bit. But um, that would be my only complaint. They could come up with maybe a little bit better wheel lock for that. But other than that, I really have no complaints of this generator. It's just absolutely been fantastic. For 900 bucks, and I've got 122 hours on it with no problems so far. I mean, what a deal. Yeah, if you like your Honda, you can go ahead and spend 2600 bucks on it, but um, I'm sticking with my Predator. So, yeah. Anyways, tubes, we'll catch you later.